So in this video here, I'm going to be teaching you how a unit circle is built from scratch. But before we can understand how that's built, we need to understand the properties of a 30, 60, 90 triangle and a 45, 90 triangle. So in this case here, when we were talking about 30, 60 degrees triangles, you might remember me saying that if this side's 30 degrees and this side's 60 degrees, well, then the 60 degrees, if that length there is X, the 60 degrees is the shortest of the lengths. Whereas the hypotenuse is the largest length, so it's always double the short side. So this would be 2X. And then this side here would be X square root of 3 or X times the square root of 3. So if I know what this side is, I can figure out the other sides. Or if I have one side, I can figure out the other sides as well. Now with a 45, 90 triangle, um, let me draw one here. Let's make this side 45, so the other side is 45. Now we talked about when both angles are the same on a right triangle, that means they're a isosceles triangle. So if I know the length of this side, and let's say the length is x, then this side here also has to be x. And if I want to find the hypotenuse, I can use a Pythagorean theorem, but we already um, know what this side would end up being. We've talked about it before. It's just going to end up being x times the square root of 2. So if I know what this side is, I can figure out all the other sides. So let's get into why we need to know these types of triangles so we can understand how the unit circle is built. So we're building it from scratch. Um, you guys might remember me giving you guys uh, a picture of the unit circle in class. And if you weren't here for it, what the unit circle looks like is I'll kind of give you a preview of what we're about to learn. Um, I know this is a lot of notes here, but this is what we call the unit circle. And what we're going to be doing is learning how did they produce the first quadrant and where did all these numbers come from and how the second quadrant is built. In the next journal, we'll talk about the third and fourth quadrant. Um, so let's get back to that first page here. And what I did was I took, so you're given a circle, so I give you a circle, and you know that the radius of the circle, so this is the radius, is 1. So what we're going to do is each of these angles produces a right triangle. And I tell you what the angle is. So you're given the angle. You need to convert the angle to radian. So we're giving it to degrees first. And then we're going to find the missing sides of the right triangle. So we need to find this side and this side. And then find sine and the cosine value. So one step at a time, they're first asking us for the angle in radians. So we've learned how to convert angles before. Let's go ahead and do that. So in an earlier journal, we learned that pi is equal to 180 degrees. So if we are converting, so our angle is 30 degrees, we can multiply it by pi over 180. Make sure that the degree is in the bottom so that way we can cancel out the units. So if I work this out, let's take a look. I can always put 30 over 1. Um, but at this point, I don't think I need to do that. I think you guys know that there's a 1 underneath. So 30 and 180. What divides into 30 and 80? Well, 30 does. So 30 goes into 30 one time. 30 goes into 180 six times. 180 divided by 30 is 60. Or sorry, 6. So if I multiply straight across, 1 times pi is pi. And then this would just be a 6 left in the denominator. So I just have pi over 6. So it turns out that 30 degrees is also pi, pi over 6. So I'm going to write that here, pi, oops, pi over 6. Now we're going to try to find sine. So if you remember Sokotoa, and I'll write it here in case you guys have forgotten. Sokotoa is sine opposite over hypotenuse or cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I were to find sine, I need to know what these sides are. So in this case here, I need to find the missing side. I know this is a 30 degree angle, so this side right here is a 60. Using the 30-60 triangle properties, if we look above just real quick, so if I know this side is 60 degrees, the 60 degrees is the shorter side. So um, if this guy is double the size, if this side, the hypotenuse is 1, that means this side here is a half. 
because the short side is half of the long side, or the short side here, um, the long side would be double the amount. So I know that this side here is a half. If I want to know what this side is, if this here is um, x, then all I have to do is take this number and multiply it by the square root. So taking this number, I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 3. So taking 1 half is kind of like my x here. If I multiply it by the square root of 3, well, I would just multiply that straight across. I could put this square root of 3 over 1 and multiply. This would be the square root of 3 over 2. So that means that this side right here is the square root of 3 over 2. Um, I'm just going to erase this part because now it looks kind of redundant. So I know what this side is. It's the square root of 3 over 2. And this side here, the opposite angle, is 1 half. And I know the hypotenuse. So I have all the pieces of ingredients to find any trig, um, all the trig functions if I wanted to. But I'm asked just to find sine and cosine. And there's a reason why I just have you guys find sine and cosine. So for sine here, it's typically your um, opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at this triangle here, I can see that with th if this is my angle, my opposite is 1 half. So I'm going to write 1 half over my hypotenuse, which is going to be 1. Now, if this bottom here is 1, that's a really nice division. Um, anything over 1 is itself, so this is just 1 half. So that means my sine here is 1 half. So I already know what sine is. For cosine, it is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent here is the square root of 3 over 2, which is right here. So um, this would be square root of 3 over 2 over my hypotenuse, which is also 1. So again, like I said before, if the denominator is 1, if you're dividing by 1, then it's just going to be itself. So it's just the square root of 3 over 2. So that is cosine. Now let's just take a look of everything we've seen here. So I've converted the degrees to radians. I know how to do that. It's just multiplying by pi over 180. I want you to notice sine and cosine for a moment. Now remember that this here is actually on a coordinate system. So when I'm looking at a point on this circle right here, any point on the circle, um, this is going to be an x and y value. Well, I can figure out what that point is by thinking of this as a line and these are the slopes. I have to go up about a half, and when you're going up, this is a y value. So this is really going up by a half. This y here is a half. And I'm going over to the right to square root of 3 over 2. So this x value here is square root of 3 over 2. So what I'm saying here, or what we will start to realize, is that, hey, I have the x value, which is also considered the adjacent side of the triangle. And would you look at this part here? The opposite side here is also the y value to um, this coordinate system. So 1 half is my y value. In other words, we're going to start to notice that sine is equivalent to, take a look at what sine is, sine is 1 half. Well, that is associated to the opposite side, which is also y. Sine can be referred to as a y value, whereas cosine is square root of 3. And I want you to notice that the square root of 3 was the x value here. So cosine often gets referred to as the x value when we're dealing with a unit circle or when we're dealing with a, um, uh, like a triangle on a coordinate system. So um, that's what I want to grab from now. But for, for now, I just want us to notice that we built a triangle inside of a circle. We had the angle set as 30 degrees. We found the radians. We found sine and cosine. So now what we're going to do is do it for um, angle 45 and angle 60 degrees. So for angle 45, we're going to be using the properties for the 45 triangle. So if you look up here, if you know that this side here is the hypotenuse, then you can find the other side. 
So the hypotenuse is equivalent to x square root of 2. So this part's a little bit tricky because um, I know that this angle is 45. So this side here is usually equivalent to um, x square root of 2 if we're talking about a 45. But if I know what x is, I know what the side lengths here are. So what I'm going to do is solve for x so I can figure out what are the side lengths. So let's do that here off to the side. Um, so if 1 equals x square root of 2, I have to divide off the square root of 2 to both sides. So that way this can cancel. And so this is 1 square root of 2 equals x. Well, from there, I can't have a root in the bottom, so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by a square root of 2. So that means I really have um, square root of 2 over 2 as my x. So that means the side lengths are the square root of 2 and the square root of 2 on that side. So this here is my um, x value because it's on the adjacent side. And this here, the square root of 2 over 2, is my y value because it's on the opposite side and it's going up and down. So I know my x's and y's. And like I said before, um, your sign is going to be associated to the opposite side. So your sign is going to be that y value, whereas your cosine is going to be that x value. But I still want to prove that to you guys. And we do this using those trig ratios. So first, let's convert this 45 degrees to radians because we're going to need it in radians as well. Um, so 45 degrees, if we multiply that by pi over 180, um, we can see that 45 and 180, they are both divisible by 45. 45 goes into 45 one time. 180 divided by 45 is 4. So this is really pi over 4. So that's what it is in radians. So for sine here, um, if I associate it to y, then I already know that my sine here is the square root of 2 over 2. But let's prove it. So we know that sine pi over 4, or I'll just write the angle, is going to be um, the opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite here is the square root of 2 over 2 over my hypotenuse, which is 1. Now, because I'm putting it over 1, notice that it's just going to be whatever I put in the top, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And that's my sign, which is exactly what I mentioned before, that the y value is connected to the sine value, is equivalent to the sine value. And the cosine value, I can already predict that that there should give me square root of 2 over 2, but let's prove it using the trig identities. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and I already said that the hypotenuse is 1. The adjacent is the square root of 2 over 2. And so this is just going to be square root of 2 over 2 because it's putting it over 1. So my cosine here is the square root of 2 over 2. And there we go. So again, you'll notice that sine here is equivalent to the y value and cosine is equivalent to the x value. Okay, let's get in down to our last triangle here, the 60 degree triangle. So if this is 60 degrees, that side must be 30 degrees. And so what I need to understand is I'm still using the properties of, um, of those 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if this is the hypotenuse, it's the longest side. 60 holds the shortest side. It's always half of the hypotenuse. So this is where the 1 half goes. Now, I've already solved for a, um, a 30, 60 triangle on the unit circle. It was this guy. So the 60 degree side had 1 half. The 30 degree side had square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to steal that number because it's the same number. So this side here, the long side, is the square root of 3 over 2. And now I have all my sides. Now for radians, I do need to figure out what is 60 degrees in radians. So I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180 degrees. And when I do, I have to figure out, okay, well, 60 and 180 can both be divisible by 60. 60 goes into 61 times. 60 goes into 180 three times. So this is pi over 3. So in radians, this would be pi over 3. So right here, pi over 3. 
Now for sine, like I said before, this here is the opposite side to the angle, so that's the y value, whereas the x value is going to be this part of the coordinate system because it's lying on the coordinate on the x-axis, and so the adjacent side is one-half. So let's prove that this does end up giving y and the x value by using those trig identities. So sine of that angle, 60 degrees, is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse. My opposite is the square root of 3 over 2, and my hypotenuse is 1, so anything over 1 is itself. So I do get sine to be equal to square root of 3 over 2. Whereas my cosine here of that 60 degree angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be um, 1 half over 1, which is the hypotenuse. So 1 half is the adjacent side. And if I put anything over 1, I'm still just going to get that 1 half on, or whatever is on my top here. So si cosine here is 1 half. So my sine here is equivalent to the y value, square root of 3 over 2, whereas cosine is equivalent to the adjacent side or the x value, which is 1 half. And there we go. We have just figured out the first quadrant to the unit circle. So let's put this together here in the next page. And I'll show you how to get the second quadrant here in a moment. So what we just discovered is that the first quadrant, by the way, any numbers in the first quadrant, the x and y values, are always positives, right? Whereas the second quadrant, the x values are um, negative because we're going in the negative x direction and the y values are positive because we're in the positive y direction. So I thought I'd just mention that here, there. So my x's are always negatives and my y's are positives. Whereas my first quadrant, though, x and y's are always positive. So what we're going to do is fill in the angles in degrees first. So when we're on the um, x-axis, on just right here on the right side, we always start at zero degrees and then we go upwards. So this first angle here was my 30 degree angle. So I'll just label that as 30. Then afterwards, this angle here is going to be my 45 degree angle. And then this here, this angle right here is that 60 degree angle. And then when you're at the very top, here on the y-axis, that's 90 degrees. So, oh, actually I need to write that there. There we go. So 90 degrees. So on a unit circle, it usually goes from 0 to 30, 45, 60, 90. And then we also need to show the radians. So for radians, for 0 degrees, it's just 0. But when it's 30 degrees, go back to your triangle um, that we did on the first page. You'll see that whenever it's 30 degrees, it's pi over 6. So this is going to be pi, pi over 6. Then the next one is pi over 4. And then 60 degrees is pi over 3. And then when you hit 90 degrees, it's half of pi, so pi over 2. And so that's the first quadrant's angle. And now we're going to put in the quadrant numbers. So like I said before, the quadrants are associated to those x and y values or the sine and cosine values. So for x here, what we got, um, if we look back at pi over 6 here, my x value was um, cosine, which is the square root of 3 over 2, and my y value is half. So if I go back here, I'm going to fill that out. So this is the square root of do that in blue, square root of 3 over 2, and then this is 1 half. So for um, pi over 4, they actually happen to be the same, so square root of 2 over square root of 2 for the x and y's. And then um, for this part here, it is for pi over 3, and so it's like the flip version of pi over 6. So it's 1 half first, and then square root of 3 over 2, so this was the cosine and sine values that we got. So when we're looking at a unit circle and looking at the coordinates, cosine is going to be the x-coordinate and sine here is the y-coordinate. That's why we were looking for sine and cosine. 
Another thing is we didn't find when the angle was zero and when the angle was 90 degrees. And I'll show you um, how to figure those out because they're a little bit easier. So notice that this was a circle and it had a radius of one. So if this radius goes all the way out to one, right? That means right here had to have been a positive one for X. So this is a positive one. And then this right here, if this point is sitting on the X axis, the Y value has to be zero. So this is zero. So when the angle is zero, the X here is one and the um, Y value is zero. Whereas up here, I want you to notice that, you know, again, this is the center and it goes out one as a radius. So this here for the Y value, it stretches to one for the y value, but the x value right there is where x is equal to zero. So the y is one and the x is zero this time. Now we're gonna try to find the other angles on the second quadrant. So once you know the first quadrant, it's really easy to get the second quadrant. All you do is a matter of reflection. And here's what I mean. So I want you to notice that this side right here is going to, is a perfect reflection of this coordinate. So it's still also one half square root of three over two. The only thing that's different is because we're on the second quadrant, um, the x values are negative on this side. So this one half, which is the x value, is going to be a negative one half. So that's the only change here. Whereas like this guy right here is um, the same as the square root of two over two because it's the reflection of pi over four. So the only difference is that this is going to be a negative square root of two over two for the x value. And same thing here, this is going to be negative square root of three over two, one half. Um, the x here is going to be a negative uh, versus this guy here. So these are just reflections. Same thing with this side here. Um, this here was a positive one. This side's going to be a negative one because it's on the negative uh, x axis. So this will be, but the y value still will be zero because it's still sitting there at y equals zero. All right, now that we know the coordinates, let's go ahead and find the angles. So when we're doing angles, I like to remind myself that this entire piece right here, when you get on this side, is 180. Or it's also equivalent to pi, right? So let's just start with um, the degrees. Let me change that to pink so I can coordinate. So if this whole thing is 180, I want you to think of this as like um, to find these angles using subtraction. So if I know that this piece right here is a reflection of the 30 degree triangle, right? Or the 30 degree angle, that means I can find this angle if I just subtract 30 degrees. What I mean is I'm gonna take 180 and subtract 30 degrees and that gives me 150. So 150 goes here. If I wanna find this angle right here, I have to look at this side. Well, this side here is equivalent to the 45 degree angle. So if I take 180 and subtract by 45, that is going to give me 135. So this is an angle of 35, 135. So if I want to figure out what this angle is, it's a reflection of 60. So 180 minus 60 is 120. And so now I have all the angles. And by the way, that little circle there is the degree sign. Sorry if it looks kind of um, not in scale, but that is a degree sign. But now I have found the first and second quadrants angles. I'm going to now find the radians. And so to find the radians, kind of the same idea here. If I know that the entire thing is pi, right? This side right here is equivalent to pi over 6. So you're going to be taking pi and subtracting pi over 6. The nice part is that pi doesn't have a denominator, so you can put it over 1 to make it a fraction. And then if you wanted a common denominator, because the bottom is 1, you can make the denominator whatever you want as long as you multiply it to the top. So this bottom could be a 6. Well, the top has to be a 6. So this is now going to be, well, 6 pi minus 1 pi is 5 pi over 6. So this here is 5 pi over 6. 
Oh, uh, actually, let me write it where I'm using that as a fraction so it's not so squished. There we go. If I want to find this side, I notice that this angle is equivalent to pi over 4. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So if I erase this piece, there we go. So this is going to be pi minus pi over 4. So put that over 1, but I need a common denominator. So I'm going to make it 4 on the bottom and 4 on the top. If I multiply top and bottom by 4. So 4 pi minus 1 pi is 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4. And last but not least, if I want to find this angle, this angle is correlated to pi over 3. So if I take um, pi and subtract it by pi over 3, I can put this over 1, which ends up being multiplied top and bottom by 3 to get a common denominator. So 3 pi minus 1 pi is 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is my um, angle that's equivalent to 120. And now I have the half part of the unit circle. I have the first quadrant and the second quadrant. And that's how we derive the unit circle, at least the first half. So why are we learning the unit circle? Let's kind of close in on today's lesson here with an overview of what the unit circle looks like. Let me get this 180 out of the way. So the unit circle is essentially a circle that has a radius of one. And just like when you were in third grade and you were learning your multiplication tables, you thought it was like, oh my gosh, I have to memorize all of these numbers. Um, well, the reason why you have to learn multiplication is because in order to understand division, you need to understand how numbers multiply. Like, let's think about it for a moment. If you were asked how, um, you know, 27 divided by 3, and to know that it's 9, well, you've practiced enough where you've done 3 times 9 that you know it's 27. So you know that 9 is a factor of 27. So... Multiplication is essential part to division, and division is essential part to fractions, knowing how to reduce fractions and multiply fractions and divide. And so um, this small thing that you had to memorize becomes a big part in the mathematics you continue to learn on. Same thing with the unit circle. It plays, it looks atrocious right now, I promise you. It, everyone, when they first see the unit circle, looks very overwhelmed by how much stuff is on here, but it will play, um, it looks like right now these are just numbers and stuff, but they will play an essential part to learning the other trig and calculus problems that you will continue to learn if you decide to keep going with mathematics. To summarize everything that we've learned today is we've just learned the first and second quadrant. And this is a great start to figuring out how the unit circle is derived and how it's built um, but the key things that I want you guys to realize, the first and qu uh, second quadrants, remember the first quadrant just has positive numbers here. All those coordinate points were positive, whereas the second quadrant is negative and positive numbers. The x values are all negative and the y values are all positive. Another thing I want us to key features on is that the coordinates, your x and y values, um, are associated to cosine and sine. Cosine are always the x values, whereas y is always the sine values. And later on, we'll talk about how to find tangent, but tangent is essentially sine over cosine, or in other words, it is always your um, y over x, because sine here is the y value and cosine is the x value. So that more on that later. Next time we are working on the unit circle, we'll talk about quadrant three and four. I don't know why that 180 is there. So ignore, um, I'm trying to erase it off, but ignore this 180 that was here. Must have been a um, malfunction in my last uh, scrolling. So that is it for this video. So just let it soak in. Um, take a look at it. Ask yourself, where did I get these coordinates? Um, where did I get these radian angles? And that's all you need to know right now, first and second quadrant. So let it soak, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.